Fort Talbert has to leave, I better do that. Uh, I know there are several issues um, that the most influential patriot leader in the state of South Carolina, Talbot Black, has, has uh, been sitting out the last few days. Now, would you like to come up and say a few things? All right, real quickly. I'd much rather just sit and chat, but I guess. <laughs> All right, H3235 is a bill that's in the State House right now that would remove the legislature's exemption from FOIA, Freedom of Information Act. In case you don't know, in South Carolina, the legislature wrote the South Carolina FOIA law to exempt themselves from it. They don't have to comply. They have it since it was written. There's a bill in the House right now that would remove that exemption. There's been a lot of games going on with the bill. The key thing right now is what they call the crossover date. That's May 1st, and the rule is if a bill doesn't make it from one chamber to the other, either from the House to the Senate or from the Senate to the House, by May 1st, it's much harder to get passed. It requires a two-thirds vote in order to get passed. And basically, if it doesn't make crossover date, they never even consider it. It's just a killer. So the crossover date, May 1st, is Tuesday. So anyway, the bill, they brought it up yesterday, considered it, talked about it, passed it 101 to 1 in the House. And then Mr. Gene Pinson, what they normally do when a bill gets passed on Thursday, they have unanimous consent to have third reading on Friday. They have to have one, two, and three readings. That's generally what they do. Mr. Pinson objected to that. All it takes is one objection because they do it by unanimous consent. It's a lot of parliamentary stuff. I don't want to bore you with that. But he objected to it, which means it's not going to get third reading until Tuesday which it has to also get over to the House Senate and be received by the Senate on Tuesday. So I think everything's going to work out. I don't know. It just depends on whether or not the Senate adjourns and if the House gets to it. And it's just they wait to the last minute on these things. You just don't know what's going to happen. So what I've asked folks to do is starting out was to call Mr. Pinson and tell him to withdraw his objection. I learned very quickly Mr. Pinson is retiring. He's not running for office again. His secretary was laughing at people, saying, ah, he's retiring. You can't hold anything over him. <laughs> but he does have a hand-picked protege, Mr. John McCravey, for his seat, who also is in a contested contest, or in a contested uh, um, race. Thank you. <laughs> so what I've asked people to do then is call Mr. McCravey, tell him to con convince his mentor to withdraw his objection so the bill can get passed and uh, make it over to the Senate. And then just go ahead and make a donation to his opponent, um, Shannon, Shannon uh, get the last name. Anyway, it's on my website on an email. Check it out. This is the games that they play over there at the State House, and they do it all the time. And they, they do it so that, you know, they pick somebody who's retiring, going out, or in a very safe district to stop the bill while everybody else can vote for it. Say, hey, I voted for it. There's nothing I can do about this crazy guy over here. And they know it's happening all along, and they do it to protect themselves and be able to say, hey, I'm voting for it, and sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. Anyway, that's all. Just wanted to let you know about what's happening, and uh, let's have some good conversation. All right, thanks, Dallas. Let's give a round of applause. Right. So just because Mr. Penson is retiring, he doesn't believe that he could be labeled as a traitor to the people. Well, we can label him that way, but hey, it's an I just did. anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to continue to build our video. That's all I'm saying about that. Uh, 